Good morning, <clears throat> good morning to everybody. So today is uh, MMPH G02, uh, block number two. This is a human resource development. Today I have to discuss about the HRD, uh, employees, HRD for the employees, and uh, your role of HR managers, competency mapping and the analysis of performance of the career planning. So now, so, so let's start the HRD employees. So where we have to see the HRD conceptual development, then the meaning of the meaning and the definition of the HRD, and HRD for the managers, and their functions, function of your HRD department of the employees, and conclusion of their writings. And unit number five, it will be a role of the HR managers. What are the roles? It should be there, and emerging the issues, what are the emerging issues for the HRD professionals and your uh, uh, different uh, consultant appointment, how the appointment uh, consultant will the contribution of the organizations in the HRD processes and the conclusions. Then uh, HRD uh, as a in your organizations their first and foremost duty is to how to sustain. So sustainability is one of the point that the sustainability community advantage should be there. Human capital uh, capitals is one of the most important assets of the organizations. So I have to be very much careful about the uh, employees and their uh, their motivation is also equal to important aspect. Then we are talking about the human resource systems. In the human resource systems, the process and the policies, aims and the planning, the planning is one of, one of the biggest uh, requirement because the, and the coordinations and talent acquisitions is also a part because the talent acquisitions and how to retain the people is another aspect. Then various levels of the managers, employees, and here actually I'm talking about the what are the as such the HRD and their associate allied systems, allied part of the HRD systems. So it is all these things are basically you can say it's a pulse of the organizations. So the pulse of the organizations where um, it needs to be developed and retain for the organization sustainable growth and the development now, uh, now talking about the definition, there are so many different definitions are there. Uh, different authors in the time to time, uh, chronologically, they have dis described a lot of uh, definitions. 
So we are now, I'm going to uh, 1964. Uh, they are uh, Ribsons and the Meyer, Meisers. They have said that HRD is the process of increasing the knowledge and the skills of the, and the capabilities of the pupils. So this is one of the concepts at time the definition was there. Then subsequently after that, the author Nudlers, he has described the HRD is a series of organizations organized activities, some organized activities that has to be conducted but within the specific time and the design to uh, produce behavioral changes. Now, um, uh, then after that, uh, 1981, Johns, he said, the HRD is a systematic expansion of the people's work. Now you see the slowly the basic concept was remain, but what are the add-on, the features are different, depending on the situations, the both organizations and the personal goals, the attainment is necessary. So this is the definition as formulated. Then 1983, another definition has come, that is a HRD is a study of how individuals and the group in organizations changes through the learning, and through this learning process, how it has changes. Then, then 1986, another uh, definition has come, comprehensive learning systems for the release. The other addition was there, that is a comprehensive learning systems is a part of the HRD, where the classroom, then meditations, stimulation, stimulated part. So a lot of features are automatically it is added. So experiences, learning experiences, and the experimental on the job on the job experiences is the key of the key of the organizational uh, for the survival purposes. Now, 1988, the Smith, author Smith, he has defined that HRD consists of the programs and activities, direct and the indirect, instructional and the individual that positively affected of the development and the individuals. Then 1989, uh, again, the Nedlar says the HRD the organized, organized learning experience provided for the employees. And uh, other authors has also said, advancement of the knowledge. The HRD basically is the advancement of the knowledge, skills, and the competencies. And the improved behavior of the people within the organizations, both their personal and the professional use. Now, see the 1990, the Smith, he has uh, the, uh, optimization, he has given a, uh, he has emphasized on the optimization methods, where the, optimally, the people can learn the systematic improvement. He is talking about the systematic improvement of the performance and the productivity of the employees through the training, education, and the development. And obviously the leadership for the mutual attainment of the organization and personal goals. Now 1991, the Karahans, he says the strategic management of the training and development should be a part of the HRD. That's why he says the strategic management of the training, development, and of the management professional education intervenes so as to achieve the objectives of the organizations. Then uh, slowly other, uh, then 1999, uh, you see the, why actually here actually I'm trying to uh, highlight it, how HRD definition has uh, modified, time to time it has modified, in a different span of time it has changed. The purpose of the, uh, the purpose of the HRD is to enhance uh, the learning human potentials and the high performance in the work related environment. Now, in 2001, the McLean um, and the, he says the HRD 
is any process of or activity that either the initially or over the long term has the potential to develop adults. Adult based uh, knowledge, expertise and productivity and the satisfactions. So there are some of the benefits of the organizations, thus the community, nation and the whole of the humanity purposes. Now 2004, here actually the definitions, the Aishan and the Kessels, this is the studies and organization process. This compromises the compromises the skillful planning, compromises the skillful planning and the facilitations of a variety of formal and informal learning and the knowledge process. So primarily, but not exclusively in the workplace. So adaptability, competence, then your adaptability, collaborations, and the knowledge creating activity of all who work for the organizations. So HRT can be defined as a set of systematic and uh, planned activities designed by young organizations to provide its the members uh, with the opportunities to learn the necessary skills to meet the current and the future job uh, demands. Now, 2005, again, the definition says, uh, author Yacht, he says the both of the organizational role and the field of professional practices means the organizational role and the field of the professionals practices are combining the things. The fundamental purpose of the HRD is to contribute both long-term strategies, performance and the intermediate performance improvement through the uh, ensuring that the organizational members have access to uh, resources for the development of the capacity. So this is the way uh, the definition has been evolved. Now you have to discuss about the HRD for the managers. So HRD uh, is a viewed basically there are some subsystems in a large system. And it is a HRD one way you can say it is a proactive approach and is maintained and is the main role in the development of the enabling the capabilities. As the any organizations, they have some objectives and uh, some set goals are there uh, to finally the what are the employees uh, has to develop in such a way so that their capability or the desired goal they should reach the desired goal as well as some development are already manifested or already decided the capability enhancement uh, that at par or no, that has to be. Uh, so that's why some proactive approach is required so that what uh, you said actually we want to write to desired levels. So HRD is a concern with the process values like trust, openness, explorations, managing conflict and which reducing the human questions. So HRD uh, entails the development of uh, and the capabilities, commitment, culture, etc. So capability development entails the expanding of the person's knowledge and skill set. So human resource development is concerned with the enhancing the workplace performance. This is all of the um, characteristics of the HRD for the managers. We are talking about. Now, the uh, component, the HRD, when the, it is in regards to the component of the HRD, is focused with the performance, whereas when they're considered as a part of adult education, the emphasis is on learning, because the learning is one of the major component for 
to develop the HRD. Now see the functions. The functional department of the HRD has aimed the HRD activities of the organization is oriented towards the socialization, socializing the new employees into the interest. As we know, when the new people, new employees are joining the company, some orientation programs, some interaction programs are, are there so that they can familiar with the uh, company's rule and regulations, code of conduct, and uh, exactly what are the tasks behind it, he's supposed to do it. So all these things, the awareness. And uh, uh, at the same time, who is his boss, who is the subordinate, what are the workers, workmen, management, managers. So some sort of socializing the things as a personal levels, behaving levels, what are the expectations on the company side um, as per the objectives? So expectations from the company side, the organization and expectations in the own, everything are is a part of your social agents. So at the micro, as a micro level, HRD refers to the enhancement of the staff quality in order to increase the productivity. Uh, the goal should be to help the people to learn the new skills and to help them perform better than their current jobs and accept future challenges. Zvartia 2005 he has written that uh, our objectives or motor should be there. Uh, as a manager, you have to see your people how to develop your uh, new skills and help them to perform better. The efficient use of the organization's human resource is frequently the most important aspect of the uh, inner success. So, genuinely effective the organization's uh, achieves is the objectives through the maximization of the potential, maximizing the potential of its people resources. What are the resources you have? That potentials that has to be maximized so that you can get a good productivity and everybody has a, a skill enough. So department, what are the functions of the HRD department? The HRD departments in enterprises must execute a few functions in order to attain these aims at the micro level. In the uh, primary uh, functions, the training and development, there's a TND. Another uh, primary functions area is your organizational development. Then the career development, CD. So HRD department in order to uh, properly accompany these three functions, three basic functions, include the role analysis, employee orientations, performance appraisals, potential appraisals, counseling, then succession planning, participative devices and the QWL, and definitely the human resource information systems and the research work, R&D or research. So these are all are the, the function departments uh, which uh, to look after so that uh, the total HID can be uh, achieved. So now here some of the flow flow diagrams. The training and development, there's the HRD, then the training and development, career development, and your uh, then in your organizational department uh, development. So now the role analysis uh, of the development and the, the secondary function, primary function is there are three: the TND, career development, and organizational OD. In short, is organizational development. Now, the sub uh, secondary functions of all three main functions there are uh, role analysis, performance appraisals, potentials, performance, employee orientation, succession planning, uh, participative devices, and the quality circles, and your human resource information systems, and the results. These all are the secondary functions.
that is the model of the HRD uh, functions. Basically. Now you see the HRD for the uh, employees. So training and development, as I said, the uh, then leadership of the executive de development, management, and the supervisory development, which is MSD. In short, organizational development, in your career development, and the what the flowchart I have seen, all these things are uh, in, in the in the previous slides. You see that all these functions. Now it is in the written form. Basically. Then we have to go for the um, the uh, uh, inductions. What are the role of a HR managers? Uh, and what are the issues in HR managers? HRD managers plays a significant role in the organizations because the HRD plays a dynamic role in coping with the changes. What are the changes that has to be coped up? And emerging issues facing the HRD professionals. So the external uh, business environment defined in terms of the political, social, economic, and technological, legal environment, also the internal business process systems and uh, work culture causes the you know, various challenges to the HR and the organization as a whole. So all these things are uh, some internal and the external issues are there, which has to be seen. Now the challenges, what are the challenges? The challenges are basically, uh, these include uh, encouraging the diversity in the workplace, Basically, the conclusiveness to, uh, to work together, togetherness in a cohesive manner that, that, that is encouraging the diversity, basically. Competing uh, in a global economy, competing the global economy, it is another issue, challenges. Reducing the competency mismatch, what are the mismatches there in the competency that has to be reduced. Addressing the requirement for the persistence in independent learning, then you are uh, promoting the organizational learning, managing the workforce generations, these are all the your challenges. Now, role of the HRD professionals in the organizations, the HRD plays a crucial role in the organizing and the supporting uh, the concern creation of the learning environment is important. That creates a uh, mature knowledge in the context. So knowledge is the most important source of the uh, competitive advantage. Then organizing the HRD for the workers. That is uh, considering taking as a all opportunities to demonstrate that uh, investing the human capital in physics, the value of the company by the increasing the leadership capacity. And it should be shared the responsibility ongoing operational development and the renewal is also one of the part to ability the quick change, uh, adapt, uh, ability to uh, change the uh, as much as possible or quickly. Then uh, practitioners, HRD practitioners in the organization has uh, three main sub functions. The role of uh, then your learning specialist, there are some of the activities of the training, then education and training, then your educational activities, all are the uh, specialized area uh, for the HRD. Then, uh, uh, manager, what are the tasks and consequences? What are the tasks or surroundings or encompasses? That is conducting an audit and the assessment of the learning development requirement, audit, time to time, audit is required, as well as the servicing a training plan, One of the training plan should be there. Number two is the managing the organization's learning systems and uh, this LMS portal, a lot of uh, different systems are there. Through this way, we can manage the uh, systems. And uh, what is the role of a administrator? So here in this case, the HRD practitioners or the managers in the organizations must play the following roles as administrators. So as a, what are the roles? Long-term and short-term planning, 
with the growing relevance of the HRD and its strategic role has been further enhanced. So, short term or long term training, uh, what are the planning program uh, should be there so that you can uh, match with the um, relevance, should be relevant and reality should be there based on the market or we can say the uh, further enhancement purposes. So, uh, some tangible, both uh, maintaining the tangible and the intangible assets uh, for the management of the organization systems. Then the planning of the HRD department, another is the budget. And the keeping the short term and the long term plans are very, impo very important functions of the department. So, we have to judicially uh, have to see the budget also so that uh, can be best economy conditions to see from the organization point of view. Uh, managing then acquisitions and development and the retention of the employees in the organization as well as the staffing of the HID department. This is another uh, functions, uh, another area for the professionals. Then establish the maturity, mutually beneficial internal and external relationships. This is one of the main issues the relationships between the internal and the external publicity, then the, your PR, I think the public relations, building and the overall employees, employer brand and the organizations is also branding is also one of the important issues. Then uh, as a consultant, the HRD manager the first and foremost, the line manager of the staff related organizations, unit of the department that should strengthen. Secondly, the HRD manager has act as a consultant to the company's chief executive CEO officer and assisting them, uh, assisting line management in the resolving the personal and the productivity and the organizational issues. So, uh, act as a consultant. Competency uh, mapping is important because you have to go see the competence of a particular, uh, your employees and accordingly have to develop. So there are two things you have to examine. There are one of the emotional intelligence and the emotional quotients. Or we can say there's a, anything emotional intelligence, AI or Q, both the things to strengthen the individuals uh, in areas like the team structure, then your leadership and decision making, etc. The value of uh, competency uh, mapping and uh, identifying the emotional strength uh, is that many employees now purposely, purposefully screen the employees to have the people uh, with the specific competencies. So it is required because in initially during the recruitment time, if you consider, if you see the competence, competency mapping, you can assess uh, it. Then you can save the more of time, uh, training, and the money also, so that you can always you have to see the base of the employee are already uh, some competencies are there. So maybe very short duration time of training programs you can uh, give them, and they can equip very early, so very easily. So. Uh, Mansfield, that is 2004, he has presented a broader view of the competency with some words. He says, the competent people are those who followed the rule and procedures without questions. And so much, they are so much aware and already skilled enough so that they are, they need not to further any training is required. They are competent themselves. So competency means the compliance that stressed over the need for uh, personnel to take more responsibility and activity. They are already uh, ready. I mean, they are accepting the responsibility. They are uh, ready for the accepting the responsibility and adaptability also. See so also and acknowledge three different images of the competency. One is used to describe what people need to be able to do 
as far as with the employment is to describe uh, what currently happens and is to describe what people are like the three things are the basic things for the things classifications there are so many lot of classification is given that is threshold competencies differentiating competencies are defined in different conditions so they are essential competencies threshold competencies are basically essential competencies required uh, basically required for the uh, your generic knowledge then motive uh, self image social role or the skill which is essential to perform a job differentiating competencies are these are the competencies that uh, distinguishes the superior performer from the average performer then the your further classify the competencies are further classified technical and or the functional business awareness organizational awareness technical skill and external awareness then managerial skills are again the part of your classification that is customer oriented planning skills then your cross functional perspectives concern for excellence judgment leadership delegating the authority and the next steps then human attributes human attributes are basically the communications then teamwork or the interpersonal effectiveness integrity transparency or and the focus while the interacting with the people is all are your um, uh, human attributes then are you chanaka as as uh, a well known royal council councilor and the prime minister from vedic india wrote that the uh, arthasastra which is said to be first to work for the competencies and you were right so in india there is the academy hrd in the ahmedabad the tv rao learning systems sshl india were the pioneers in the designing implementing and the conducting the assessment centers of indian organizations so thus developing the competency uh, mapping method models so with this uh, with the development of the assessment
थर्टी तक मैं आपको बताता हूँ so okay i think now again i have to uh, slide number 20 i have already covered up some of the things so now let's start from competency we are talking about the competency mapping uh, the classification of the competencies so now you have to see the threshold competencies this is basically the essential competencies is required for the uh, generic knowledge and the motive the self image social role and the skill which is essential to perform the job this part we can say it is a threshold competencies now differentiating the competencies differentiating competencies means differentiation competencies means so these are the competencies that distinguish a superior performer from the average performer <clears throat> so that is the difference the superior performer and the average performer what are the difference that is part uh, we can say it is a differentiating competencies now here i have to classify some of the uh, technical Uh, or you can say the functional competencies that is one of the business awareness organizational awareness technical skills and external awareness then your uh, uh, managerial skills in the managerial skills where we have to see the planning skills the judgment leadership risk taking how much risk you can take it There is a risk management part of this. See, this is also a part of your competencies. So, during the situation, in any situations, we have to have a uh, that type of leaderships. We can take uh, some risks, uh, calculated risks, so that com- uh, considering the all the aspect, we have to see. It. Human attributes, as we say, that is a economic communication skill. You should have. that is our uh, interpersonal effectiveness integrity and transparency these all are the human attributes now uh need why it is need need for the competency mapping because you see the human resource management is a process basically the process of the managing the employees and the organization simultaneously in order to attain the shared goals or we can say the set it goals by the management so uh to so that's why uh, identifying the mapping and the mapping the competencies is becoming increasingly significant so we have to identify individually how much efficient he has uh to so that that's why the that mechanism for competency is required then we can further improve uh, through the training programs so well run a well run business uh, should have the clearly outlined positions and a list of competencies to effectively uh, fulfill each functions as we know the sweat analysis the swot strength weakness opportunity and the threat 
but analysis is very much required. The better we can understand where we are and how much competency is further required to achieve the, uh, in order to achieve the professional goals. So competency mapping, other way you can say this enables the finding of the subjective knowledge and the skills, behavior and the capacities necessary for the current and future workforce selection in accordance with the institutional priorities aligned with the changes. The analysis can assist in the developing uh, workforce development programs and it is very close to existing gap between the competencies required for the job. And uh, other way I can say the competencies is determined, but they determined the institutions to assess the appropriate training program. What are the gaps between the actual and the projected outcomes? It can help the enhance by the key performance areas. So here yeah, actually I'm talking about the significance because that's why it is significant because you have to identify the gaps. And at the same time, you have to take action for the enhancement. So mapping employees or the organizational skill gap analysis with the relevant learning objects is critical for the developing of a proper learning process. As a result, the appropriate capabilities of the workers or the organizations we can see. Assist is the development of competencies throughout the career planning phase. Because if you see, you have a we have a, some any organizations having a, your a career planning systems. So there that the competencies are helping to uh, throughout the planning phases because you know, so any modification or any amendment is required time to time. So based on the feedback or, or you can say the based on the output of the competencies result, we can implement accordingly. So competency mapping is a function of HR. So you can say in this case, the competency mapping basically is a function of the HRD or we can see organization development purposes. These are aids in the staff selection purposes, growth, performance evaluation purposes, even in the university teaching professions also. Suppose some of the teachers and professors we have, how much the capacity or capability that has to be map, mapped out and accordingly the development can be uh, done. So government institutions, organizations are always working in improved institutional standards, educational quality, and the instructor effectiveness. There are also this type of mapping mechanisms are adopted and this working. Area. So the established uh, competency mapping skill, skill will be highly valuable to in employee self-development initiatives. Now, there are so many models out there, you have to model or we can say the framework, basically the models and the framework are almost the same meanings. So framework are basically the complete collection of the competency clusters and the competencies and the behavioral indicators and then it integrates all the behavioral indications, indicators that apply to various positions at all levels in the organizations. So framework or model should be such a way, it should be integrated and the, all the behavioral indicators that has to be placed and um, in all levels in the organization. Uh, the degree of proficiency in each skill of the individual is measured against a performance benchmark specified by the relevant institution. Different institutions have a different 
um, measuring systems, uh, how to uh, scale, how to uh, scale in the, uh, this uh, proficiency, degree of proficiency. Different organizations also have a different way they are measuring the things. So, in the uh, competency modeling, if you see the modeling, there are some five levels are there. There are five levels of the proficiency that is defined. The first thing is the beginning. The employee response is reactive by nature because as we've seen, that's the reactive by the nature. So that is the beginning part. Second is elementary. Within his own zone of the influence and the control and the an employee responds respectively and is aware of his requirement. That is the elementary part. First of all, you should understand uh, what is the uh, requirement. self satisfactory uh, functions. Once the employee has to decide, he has to self-control, okay, I have to do these things. Then intermediate. The employee makes effort to exceed beyond the uh, required expectations. Has a uh, broader perspective. So the response to all the situations, analysis, and the performance are required as standard. That's why the standard is coming up. Then advanced. Employee proactive, proactively respond to all the situations and generate the performance consistently above the requirement of the standards. So this is called the advance, advancement, you can say. Next part, uh, exceptional uh, foresight creates. The expert can always foresee what is coming and how to do it. And accordingly, he can motivate the things. So learning environment is uh, very much needed. And it is so that uh, you can, we can reach the desired level of the performance. Then uh, your uh, skill, now coming to the skill. Skill is basically a person's ability to perform something well in referred to as their skill. So for example, you can say the uh, excelling at uh, Microsoft Word. So you are excel. You can win very good. So that is your skill, knowledge. This is the information that a person applies in a certain field. Suppose, for example, a restaurant where you can see the international uh, uh, clients are coming and there are distinguished and the exceptional waiter and the waitress who speaks many languages from his or her uh, medical uh, inter counterparts. So that is his uh, basically the his knowledge level. Self image because a person's perceptions, these are our own identity, personality, and the value. That is the self image at the minimum. Leaders, as a leader or as a person development. Then your motive. What motivations? What motives the someone of actions is all of the uh, achievement. Professional, that is, a, we can say the knowledge ability, the knowledge based capabilities, KU, which shows the degree of professional skills and the managerial domains. So they are also identified by the, their functional capabilities. Here actually I am talking about what are the pillars are uh, the holistic model consists in a holistic model consists this, all these things parameters that should be there social maturity is in short sq it is comprised as an individual's personality social maturity is a difficult concept of the graphs and it synchronized with the social responsible ethical humane and the personal moral Application skill this is also a uh, practical, we can say the practical skills tell us whether the manager knows that what to do and how to do the business. Mm -hmm. 
there are so many approaches are there. So first step is uh, profiling of the organization. First, you have to see the profile of the organization. That's it, the profiling of the organization. Second step uh, is your job profilings. Second step, role or job profilings. Through this job analysis uh, details, you can, uh, you can uh, fix the uh, tasks. Third step is your identifications, performance indicators. This is the, done by the two or three stages. Fourth step is the superior perspective of the performance. Fifth is compilations, because it is it's complex natures. Sixth is your defining the competency. And seventh is your finalization and the validation of the model. So this is all our things. And the next sessions we will see the assessment part also. So okay, thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.